Hi everyone, welcome to What's New Andrew. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. I recently did a video on how to use Cloudflare tunnels to access all of your self-hosted applications from anywhere on the web. This is a great solution if you have an ISP that doesn't allow you to do port forwarding or you just don't want to open up ports in your firewall in the first place. In this video, we're going to go a little bit further than we did in the last one. We're going to look at authentication and how we can use that to restrict access to some of your self-hosted applications. You may have a photo gallery that you want your family to be able to see, but no one else. And at the same time, you might have a public website that you want anybody to access. So with the Cloudflare tunnels and using the, the authentication that we're going to set up here, you'll be able to do just that. Today, we're going to look at three different ways to secure your applications with authentication. The first one is going to be you use a pin. This will be emailed to you by Cloudflare whenever you want to access the applications. The second one is going to be use Google to authenticate to your applications. And the third one is going to be to use an IP address. Before we begin, if you're not familiar with Cloudflare tunnels, I have a video right here that will walk you step by step how to set up Cloudflare tunnels and access all of your self-hosted applications with ease. You can go watch that, get your tunnels set up, and then come back over here to learn how to secure them. So I hope this sounds interesting and useful. If it does, let's go ahead and take a look at how to do it. What we're gonna look at first is going to be how to secure your applications using a pin that is emailed to you. So over here on the screen, what I have on the left is uh, the Cloudflare dashboard. And then on the right, I just have a sample little dashboard that I've set up for, for our use here. So the way we wanna start is to go into our zero trust and from here, we'll be able to go in and look at the tunnels that we have. In our instance, I have a, a demo tunnel that we're gonna use, and we're gonna go ahead and set up a tunnel that connects in so we can access this application over the internet instead of using the, uh, the internal LAN address that I have here. So we'll go ahead and create that public host name. We're gonna call it dashboard, what's new andrew.dev, and the URL is gonna be the same URL that we have up here uh, in the right. We're gonna include the uh, port as well, which is uh, port 3000 in the, the Docker instance that I set up. And we'll go ahead and hit save. So now when we go to this address here, the dashboard.whatsnewandrew.dev, it should route us directly to our, our uh, instance through the internet. So we'll go ahead and test that now. We'll go ahead and paste that address in, hit return, and we'll see that it takes us uh, instantly to the dashboard that we set up. So now we have our connection from the, the internet directly into our self-hosted application. Remember, if you don't have anything set up in tunnels yet or you're not sure what you need to be doing, there is a video that I've already done. So you can go ahead and take a look at that. I'll have that linked here uh, as well. So you can go ahead and follow that and get your tunnel set up. But now the next step that we wanna do is we wanna secure this because right now anybody in the world can get to this uh, application. And you may not want that depending on what the uh, service is that you're, you're uh, trying to secure. So to secure this application, what we wanna do is first we're gonna to go to settings because we're gonna set up the uh, security type we want. Under authentication, we're gonna to go to login methods, click add new, and then click one time pin. And what this will do is it'll email a pin to whoever the authorized emails are that we're gonna set up here in a moment. So we'll go back out, uh, out to access, applications, and add an application. Since we're self-hosted, we'll just hit select for self-hosted. And now we give it an application name. Now the application is basically what it is, what URL it is that we're looking to protect. In this case, we're looking to protect the dashboard.whatsnewandrew.dev. So for simplicity, I'm just gonna call this application dashboard. We're gonna leave the session duration at 24 hours. You can use the drop down and select whatever you want, uh, but 24 hours is, is fine for right now. And the subdomain that we're setting up is dashboard.whatsnewandrew.dev. So now we've got that set up to, to say uh, protect that uh, that, that URL behind authentication. If we scroll down, we're not gonna change any of the application uh, appearance. We get down to the bottom here, you're gonna see identity providers. This is the new part that uh, we're looking to, to connect to. 
So we're going to say accept all available identity partner providers. In this case, we only have the one-time pin. We'll also show up uh, another example of, of other identity providers that we can use um, here later in the video. So we'll scroll to the bottom. We're going to say next. And now it's going to say, what is the policy? What's the authentication policy that we're looking? So here, I'm just going to call this pin because we're going to use a pin to uh, that gets generated and emailed to us. It's going to allow whoever uh, wants to access this um, access if you're in that list of approved emails. And we're going to scroll down here to the include rules. We're going to say emails and we're going to give it an email address. All right. So with this email address now, what it's saying is that um, that's the only one that we can add uh, the one time pen to. So you can put any number of email addresses in here that you want. Right now, we're just going to have the one example. We'll scroll to the bottom, leave everything the same, hit next. Again, we'll leave all this information the same for this uh, example, and we'll hit add application. And now what you've said is anyone that goes to this uh, URL right here is going to have to authenticate with it. So to do that, they're going to put in, a, they're going to be requested to put in an email address. Now they can put any email address they want, uh, but it doesn't matter. It's going to ignore it unless it's in that list. So let's test it out. We're going to go over here to uh, the dashboard and we're going to refresh and see what happens. And we see that now that we refreshed, it's saying, uh, get a login code emailed to you. So now uh, you've put it behind uh, authentication with uh, Cloudflare access. So we're going to go ahead and put in our email address and we're going to say, send me a code. Now it's asking you to, uh, to put that code in. So if you had a valid email address, it's going to send you a code. If you don't have a valid email address, it's just going to do nothing. So now we'll go out and check an email and see what we got for our code. Okay, we've received our code. We've gone ahead and put it in. So we'll hit sign in. And now it takes us directly to our application. So it's that easy to go ahead and set up just a pin uh, authentication to your application. This will just email you or whoever you put in that uh, list of email addresses. It'll send a six digit pin, put that in, and now you have access. Uh, anyone else can put in all the emails they want, but it just won't send anything. Uh, so that's the most simple version of, of how we can do some authentication. The next thing we're going to use is we're going to look at uh, Google and see how we can use Google to authenticate with uh, our applications. So we'll do that now. The next authentication we're going to look at is using Google to authenticate with all of your applications for Cloudflare access. With this, we need to start out again at our Zero Trust uh, dashboard. We're going to go down to Settings. And we're going to go to custom pages within custom pages. You'll have a team domain, the team domain we set up in the previous video. So if you don't understand what that is, or you have questions on it, feel free to take a look at that video. I'll have a link and then you can go ahead and take a look and see what, what those are all about. But with your team domain, you're going to go ahead and uh, take that e or that uh, domain name and want to save that for our next steps. So to go ahead and link up everything we need for Google, we're going to go to another tab and we're going to actually go to cloud.google.com. You'll want to do this in the, uh, the account that you're going to set up your access. So within there, you're going to hit console, APIs and services, and then you're going to hit credentials. Now you'll see I've got one in here already. That was for, for previous uh, testing. So we're going to go ahead with this and say create credentials, OAuth client ID, the application type is a web application. We're just going to call this dashboard. And here's where you need that, uh, that address. So this is going to be the, the origin and the redirect URLs. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add the URI. And then we're going to take this address and we're going to add that as well as a little bit of an extension to it for our redirect URL. So the extension we add, to the end of it is slash CDN dash CGI slash access slash callback. So once you do that, we'll hit create and it's given you a client ID and a client secret. Now you want to keep these um, secret because you don't want to uh, get these out or share them, uh, but I'm going to delete this and get rid of all this before uh, I publish the video. So it's not really an issue, uh, but definitely make sure you keep these, uh, these secret. 
So how do we use this to, uh, to connect to Cloudflare? If we split our screens again, on the left side, we'll, we'll go over to settings, and then we're gonna go to authentication. If you remember before we added the one-time pin, we're gonna go in and say add new, Google, and this is where we'll put in all our information. So we'll take our client ID and throw that into where it says app ID. And we'll take our client secret and we'll put that into the client secret. Hit save and we're ready to go. So now it's going to give us the, the ability to use a one-time pin or Google to authenticate with our applications. So let's test that out. We'll go up to access, applications, add an application, and we're going to do what we did similar with the, uh, the pin before. We're going to do a new application. Again, we're going to call this one dashboard because I'm not very creative, so I'm just going to use the same one. Uh, and we're going to say session duration, again, 24 hours. Subdomain, dashboard. Domain, what's new andrew.dev. Again, we'll leave the application appearance the same. And if we go down to the bottom here, we'll see now that we have two identity providers. We have the one-time pin, which we set up before, and we also have Google. So we'll go ahead and in the right here, hit next. And then we have to set up our policy name. Because we're gonna use the, uh, the pin and the email, I'm just gonna call it pin and Google. Uh, we're gonna say allow anybody who passes this through and go down here again to our emails. So the emails you're gonna use are um, whatever email you wanna get the pin sent to or your Gmail email. Okay, so we're ready. We'll scroll on down now to hit next. Again, we'll leave these the, the same as they are defaulted and we'll hit add application. And now we should be ready to go. Whenever we go to this uh, URL here, it will ask us for authentication. So let's test that out. If we're on our local environment, it'll let us in directly because there's no security there. But if we go out here to our, um, our one through the internet, when we click on it, now it's gonna ask us, just like it did before, it's gonna ask us to sign in. We can sign in with Google, which is the one we just set up, or we can do the email pin that we already did. Um, since I'm already signed in, you can see up there at the top right, since I'm already signed in, when I click on this, it's gonna take me directly to the dashboard. If you're not signed in, it's just gonna ask you to authenticate with Google. So let's go ahead and click on this to authenticate with Google, and it takes me right in. So now we've set up uh, Google authentication through uh, Cloudflare to be able to protect your application. So you now have two options for uh, connecting your applications. You have uh, the one-time pin, which is great if you don't use Google or you don't have any uh, third parties you wanna use. It's uh, built into Cloudflare, it'll email you that pin directly. The other op option that we have that we just went over is using uh, Google to authenticate. So those are two easy ways to, to do it. Uh, a third that I'm gonna show you is how to use your IP address to automatically connect into applications. And this is great if you're using tunnels on cloud instances, or if you know what your IP address is that you're coming from, because then you can use this to, to connect in and authenticate without having to use email or anything else. It's just gonna do it based on your IP address. So let's take a look at how to do that now. The third method we're gonna look at for securing your applications is using an IP address. Now this isn't the IP address like your local uh, network router would give you like a 192 or a 10.0. This is gonna be your IP address given to you by the ISP. You can find that out by Googling it or going somewhere like whatsmyip.com. Uh, any of those will give you the actual IP address. This uh, setup will work wonderful if you're setting up uh, cloud instances and you have your applications hosted out in the cloud and always coming from a specific IP address, such as your home address or a business address, you can do this to actually bypass the authentication. So let's walk through how we can do that now. We'll go to Access, Applications, and Dashboard. And if you notice, we have our uh, dashboard application that we already set up before. We're just gonna add another policy to that. So we'll hit Edit, and we'll hit Add a Policy. Now this is, going to, this is going to be a little bit different because we're going to actually bypass the security based on the IP address. So we're just going to call this IP and we're going to say bypass. 
One thing to keep in mind is that Bypass is going to let anybody from that IP address connect to your services. So it's not a great way to do it if it's a, an IP address where it's coming from, say, a business or it's coming from your home or you're sharing an IP. Uh, IP address with a number of other folks because everybody's going to have access to, to these applications. So just something to keep in mind um, just as you're going forward. But it's a great way to just do a quick way to connect into things. So let's go on down and we're going to add our IP address here in the IP ranges. This is where you would put in again that IP address that your ISP gives you. Okay, so we've, we've got our IP address. This isn't real, but uh, this is the example we're going to use. And then what we'll do is once you put in that IP address, hit add policy. And now you've got it set up. It's going to actually bypass all security if you're coming from that IP address. So let's test it out and see how it works. All right, so we're back to the split screen. What this is going to allow us to do is to test things out. Um, if you are coming from the IP address that we put in the list, it should bypass all security and let you right in. However, if you're not coming from that IP address, it's going to make you either authenticate using the email pin that we set up or Google. So let's test it out and see how it works. If we go over here to the, uh, the dashboard, what's new.andrew.dev, when we go to it, it should just take us right in. And it does. Perfect. So it shows that we're coming from the right IP address. So everything's good to go there. However, if we wanted to remove that, let's see what happens. We can go over here and we'll say delete. We'll delete this policy. And now it's going to force everybody to authenticate. So now when we come back over here and we go to the dashboard, it should take us again to our authentication page. And it does. Perfect. So now it's asking us to authenticate again, either with Google or with a one-time pen. So now we've got three methods to secure your applications using Cloudflare tunnels. The first one was the emailed pen. It works great if you're uh, okay with going out and getting a pen. It's kind of like a lot of the uh, applications that are out there now. The second one is using Google. So if you want to use Google to authenticate with your applications, you can do that. Either one of these, you could just put in all the email addresses that you approve uh, having access to these. And whatever users use those can get authenticated access to your applications. The third one we looked at, which is a little bit less secure in terms of uh, any authentication, is the IP address. Now, it's secure in that you're coming from an IP address. However, it does allow anybody on that IP address uh, access to your application. So uh, anybody else uh, connected to your Wi-Fi that might be going out to the internet can connect to it because they're coming from the same IP address. So just something to keep in mind for your security going forward. So that's it. We've wrapped up another episode of What's New, Andrew? I hope you learned something new about Cloudflare Tunnels and how you can use authentication to control access to all of your web hosted applications. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you like this, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up to let me know that you enjoy the content. See you in the next video.